Hey y'all, welcome to my kitchen here at Laughing Willow Farms. My name is Keisha and this morning, you can see we have a lot going on, but I'm going to try and get some venison ground up. Friend of mine traded with me for some eggs and so I'm gonna try to get it ground up so that we can use it for like hamburgers and sausages and things like that. And this is the first time I'm using an attachment on my KitchenAid. So I'm super excited to see how it's gonna work. I'm also excited to see how it's gonna go with a little toddler around, little children around homeschooling and getting this knocked out as our project for this morning. Okay, so I put on the largest attachment first, but I mean, it's working really well. So my thought was put it in strips to feed it through. And then I'm gonna grind up the fat and mix it with it. And then we'll do a finer grind. But I mean, it's working really well. Look. This is after the first coarse grind. I'll coarse grind the fat as well here in a minute and we'll mix it all together. This is all the fat going through. Really, I bought this meat grinder to do the fat to render it down. But it's working out for this. Excuse the messy kitchen, but we have this little one entertaining herself by pretending she's washing the dishes. Thanks. I totally forgot that my, my beef fat is already ground for me, so that's easy. Now what I'm gonna do, I think, is just divide this half and half so I can mix it really well, and then we'll run it back through. Okay, now I'm gonna switch out this little attachment right here to the finer grind. These are so easy. Like you literally just take this off. I'm gonna switch it out and get a different plate. Here are all the plates. I think what I'm gonna do is do this one and then maybe run it through one more time to here. Of course, this is all fatty right here because that was at the tail end. I'm wondering if I bump up here. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna change out the next plate. That really ground it pretty good, um, but we just like it a little bit finer especially because I had to trim all this out and I've not done that quite a lot. And so I don't know how good of a job I did. I'm gonna try this small one and see if it doesn't work, then I'll go back to the next size up. But I really think we will appreciate the smallest grind, especially since I'm incorporating the fat in. Here we go. How we're gonna like it. I think it's worth the extra step. You really probably could have done just the size up from this one and cut out a step. But I'm already doing it. I've already got the mess. It's probably only gonna take me 10 more minutes to do this. So I'd rather do it the way we like it. It does take a little more arm power to do this fine grain, I have to say. Carnivore and why? I mean, carnivore is what it sounds like. You only eat meat. Now, people who live a carnivore lifestyle kind of can choose different uh, mixes of like what they consume that they feel like is beneficial for them and is within that diet uh, parameter. For us, we are doing it because Robert kind of deals with some autoimmune stuff and I have low thyroid, which really is my doctor believes, and yes, as holistic as I am, I have a doctor, but he's like incredibly holistic, we use homeopathics with him, um, so they believe that my Lyme disease is really what has caused a low thyroid. Now, my immune system looks really, really good and fights off that Lyme pretty well based on labs. 
and I've been doing something called low dose immunotherapy treatment for the Lyme and for Epstein Barr and parasites and yeast. And so I've been doing that with really, really great success. Started that in February, work here in April, and I mean, I just feel really good. But there's something I can do called the beta with it. With the beta, um, basically it's the same LDI treatment, which is like homeopathy in a shot form, but it goes to the cellular level. And with that, you have a couple of days where your immune system could be compromised and you really can't go on it unless you have a really good strong immune system. But after talking about it with my doctor, I decided I wanted to do it. And you have to be really strict for four whole weeks. So we had been considering doing carnivore to just lower inflammation, give our bodies a chance to reset. And with the strict diet that you have to do doing the beta, carnivore <laughs> makes the most sense. So we're going to do carnivore. We started yesterday and we will do it for seven weeks and then slowly incorporate some things back in. So for us, carnivore is going to look like primarily ruminant animals only. So we don't have access to elk and that's gonna look like sheep, which luckily we have some lamb from last year still, um, beef, which we have a quarter cow we bought and then we're gonna buy a third of a cow soon. And this venison here that I traded. So I'm gonna trade a little bit more venison for some of our pastured chicken. We've got, I think, 10 left in the freezer, and then we're going to be processing another 50 here in four weeks. So might as well trade that, I feel like, and get what we need for right now. We will eventually add in eggs back, um, but these first few weeks, we're gonna keep the eggs out. I'm not sure at what point I'll add the eggs back in. I can have the eggs doing the beta, so, I don't know, we'll see on the eggs. Um, but I have to keep dairy cut out, which a lot of people still do A2, A2 dairy, which we have our goats, and then we have access to A2, A2 dairy. Um, but I can't do it on the beta, so I won't be bringing that back in for seven weeks. That's probably the first thing I'll introduce back in at the seven week mark. And I think the cool thing is, is I'll be able to see how I feel. I've only cut out dairy one time ever. We were doing something kind of similar to this, working with um, a naturopath about six years ago. The, the difference is, is this time around, I started with finding out what the root cause was and um, that helps you know what to do about it. I think so many people just kind of start saying you need to cut everything out because these things are inflammatory instead of figuring out like why are you inflamed in the first place and for me we chose to do bioenergetic testing and then to follow that up with confirming through lab work and that was a lot allowed me to figure out hey it's Lyme and Epstein-Barr that's causing this and then attacking it through homeopathics that way herbs and then the diet comes alongside it so that you can then heal. So it'll be interesting to see how the dairy cutting that out does and then how it does coming back in for me. So it definitely takes a little bit longer on this slow grind. I'm about a quarter of the way through, but I think it'll be worth it to have this fine grind, not slow grind, fine grind. It is a slow grind. <laughs> Not bad for this whole thing probably took me about 45 minutes to do. That doesn't include the cutting and trimming. That took another 20 minutes, but this is not bad for a couple dozen eggs and some arm grease, literally, because I have grease all over my arms. So I'm gonna cook some up for me for lunch and I'll let you know how it tastes. I have to say any venison I've had before, it tastes a bit gamey to me. So I'm curious to see what it tastes like since I incorporated in the beef fat and the lard to see if it gives it a bit different of a flavor. And then I need to package all this up. 
All right, so I just finished the burger patty for my lunch. It was really good. It actually tasted a lot like beef, and I think that that's because of the fat that I used. So definitely we'll be saving some from now on that I won't render down into tallow to put in with venison. All in all, super easy. Got six pounds for about an hour's worth of my time. So thanks for hanging out with me. I hope this video helps, inspires you to get something done in your kitchen that just seems like it's a chore, that it really will not take that long. That's how those kinds of things feel for me. I put it off, but it was well worth it. Until next.